Man ye va kilang dreshyang, pravilapya diya sudhi. Bhava ye de kamat manang, nirmala kashavatsada. Atman yeva, in the Atman alone, akilang, entire, drushyang, perceived world of objects, pravilapya, merging, dhya, by intelligence, sudhi, a wise man, bhavayet, should meditate, ekang, one, Atmanang, self, nirmalakashavat, like pure space, sada, always. The wise one should merge the entire world of objects in the Atman alone by intelligence and constantly think of the self as never contaminated by anything, like pure space. Namaste. So this is the second part of the meditation. The first part of the meditation on Brahman was described in an earlier verse as discrimination, vivekaha, between the eternal and the non-eternal, the indestructible, unchanging, and the destructible, changing, things that we perceive. And this is neti neti, of course. I am not the gross body. I am not the subtle body. I am not the mind, the intelligence. I'm not the ego. I'm not this world. I'm not the senses. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not my thoughts, etc., etc., and so on, until nothing is left but the self then you have to see it for what it is, because it's the seer. So the view, actually, in all four states of consciousness, whether it's Dvaita Vada, Vishishta Dvaita Vada, Vivarta Vada, or Ajata Vada, all place the self at the very center. Isn't it? You ask anyone, Stop anyone on the street. huh? Try to find the most ignorant, stupid, dumb-looking person that you can. It doesn't matter. Just anybody will do. <laughs> and Kali Yuga. And ask them, do you exist? And of course they're going to say, yes, of course I exist. Isn't it? And yet... These people know nothing of Advaita Vedanta. They know nothing of Upanishads or Atma Bodha. But they know. How do they know? Because that's the property, that is the function, that is the nature of the self, the knower. So because everybody is the self, <laughs> everybody is Brahman, their self is all the same in respect of these qualities. So everybody knows that they are, that they have being. Now, then, of course, they superimpose that on the body. That's another story. Huh? The part of the discrimination, the viveka, the first process of meditation, is to discriminate, to, to separate the temporary from the eternal. And when nothing but the eternal is left, that's Brahman, that's the self, the knower, that which sees. And everything else is the seen, the drishya, as it's said in this verse. So Atman Yeva, drishya, huh? that he is the seer of all these things, the seen the objects. So, okay, now the second stage of meditation is to merge the objects back into Brahman because that's where they come from. 
That's the only place they can come from. And it's very easy. huh? You just analyze the object, go deep into the object itself, and find Brahman within it. Just as you found Brahman within yourself by neti neti. By going deep into the object, you'll find out, well, at least three things. That its being is borrowed from Brahman. That its consciousness, if any, is borrowed from Brahman. And that its bliss, its happiness, is borrowed from Brahman. These three things are true of every object, every being, every living creature especially, that there is in the universe. And it's even true of the universe itself. All of its being, consciousness, and bliss is simply borrowed from Brahman. <laughs> Honestly, it's enough to make me roll on the floor laughing that anybody could miss this. Now, further... The third and final stage of the meditation, Nididhyasana, is to sit in that realization, to live in that realization, saturated by the realization of that everything temporary is different from Brahman, and everything is ultimately sourced from Brahman, therefore it merges back into Brahman at the end. And then walk around with that consciousness and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, at first you have to sit, at first you have to concentrate to establish this view, the ajata view. Then you have to get strong in memory so that you can remember Brahman, you can remember the self under all circumstances no matter whether favorable, unfavorable, sacred, profane, pleasant, painful, or what. That's the final stage of the process. That's what makes you a jivan mukta, is to be able to walk through the shadow of the valley of death and fear no evil. For thy rod, thy staff, huh? What's the meaning of this recondite saying? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why wouldn't we want him? <laughs> when we were kids, we misunderstood everything. <clears throat> so one can assume that the people today claiming to be Christians also misunderstand everything. No, the meaning is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in need of anything. Just like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yogi nam apisarve sam, na sochati na kankshati. One who is in yoga neither desires to have anything nor laments over anything that is lost. So this is the same mood. This mood is attainable by yoga, and yoga means to join. And so we're joining in this second stage of meditation, the apparently separated objects with the actual being of the subject, the self, Brahma. And then in the final stage, we, keeping this all in mind, engage in a so-called normal life. <laughs> Well, actually, it is normal. The normal condition is to know, I am Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, or Tattva Masi, you are Brahman. And the series of Vakya Vritti is going to go deep into this. And uh, so I don't need to say more about it here, although more about this topic will come up eventually in Atma Bodha. It's really explained exhaustively in Vakya Vritti. That's why I started presenting it in parallel. One should meditate 
by merging. What does this mean, merging the objects back into the self by intelligence? It means seeing that through the intelligence, knowing that, having heard from the scriptures, that everything arises from Brahman. Uh, like in the last little series that we did about the glories of self-realization, it's revealed in the Upanishads that everything arises from the self. Absolutely everything. So if it arises from the self, it also merges with the self at the end. So this is why we put the Tripundra. And when we put, we chant the mantra, earth is ashes, fire is ashes, air is ashes, space even is ashes. Huh? Even water is ashes. Because at the end of the universe, the whole thing is burnt up by Rudra. And it gets burnt down to ashes, nothing left. And then those materials, those raw materials, earth, water, and the rest, all merge back into Brahman from whence they originated. So one should see like this, because we know that the end of everything is inevitable. This is the final state that I alluded to recently, that causality travels backwards in time, from the end state, the final state in the future to the present and shapes the present such that over time, the final state alone will be reached. So this is actual causality. This is the actual Vedic understanding. So the intent of Brahman in emanating everything is to again merge it at the end. That is the end state. So we can know this with intelligence and abstract from it and see the whole existence of all these objects as a series of creation, maintenance, and destruction. That is the Vedic view. And so holding this in mind, one should then live an apparently ordinary life without trying for any special recognition or anything like that, but just being kind and being harmless and being sinless. And this is the perfection, not assuming some grand titles and all of this. Stuff. You know, I mean, we play with this you know, like consciousness research center. Yeah, this is this is just play, right? You got that, right? This is not, we're not actually creating an organization. We don't care about organizations. We care about consciousness. So it's just a catchy title, it's just an image, just a metaphor to help you understand what we do. We look into these things with our own consciousness verify them by our own practice, and then we share them with you. And hopefully that will help you navigate the complexities and the pitfalls of the path to authentic revelation and enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.